on into Drinks with Banks. I'm your host, Julie Stewart Banks, and we are so fortunate to have one of my friends and such a talent in the sports broadcasting world, Lauren Gardner from DAZN, from NHL Network, really all, so many different jobs right now, and you're now in New York living here. Yeah, dude. We go all the way back to Anaheim when we were both hockey reporters. Yeah, we were sideline reporters, and now we're millionaires here living in New York. That's what we like to tell people. And we're going to be doing a, we have a drink on the show. So I know you have to work later. So I give you the option. Like you don't actually have to sip this drink, but uh, what would you like? What would be your ideal drink? In Okay. So number one, I'm going to partake because that's what we do. That's my girl. That's how we roll. <laughs> uh, number two. So this was like, at first I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to be like cool chick and go with a beer or something. And then of course I'm like, anytime I'm out, you know, in Manhattan, I drink either a martini because I'm just trying to live my best sex in the city of life. Of course, because the that's 90s what we're all trying to do. They want their show back. And then I was like, okay, I just went to Peru last summer and the national drink is a Pisco Sour. Mm -hmm. And so we got to make them, you know, the whole touristy thing, but I'm like all for a tourist trap. And these things are addictive. And I was yeah. recently thinking, like, I haven't had a Pisco Sour in a minute. So perfect okay so we're gonna have a pisco sour and cool. by the way this here is mike <laughs> not just this weird guy creeping in the background also sometimes does that too but yeah. mike is going to make us a drink and before Sweet. we do get to that where are we going to be drinking today? You mentioned Peru. Yes, we're going to get on the Jetliner. Do people still say Jetliner? Like, who I've am never I? heard Jetliner like, before. We're on a streaming platform. I'm supposed to be, like, talking Generation Z. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Millennial we're going to We're going to do something even cooler than a Jetliner. We're going to get on the, the flying vessel that is an mm -hmm. airplane, and we're going to go down to Peru. So All right. So, be Lima Let's or Cusco. Go. Well, there we Cusco. are. We are in Peru right now. Love it. <laughs> I, I feel right at home. By the way, I, I didn't know you were an actual thing back here. I'm a real person. Yes, he's a, a real boy. He's a real live boy. <laughs> Look at me. I was told you were just a glorified prop, but yes, yeah, so that inactive. that was the director's notes to Mike here today. <laughs> really great notes. Really great notes. Yep. And I feel strong us. as a glorified prop, you know. So you are making us right now the pisco sour. I'm making you a pisco sour. And, and tell everyone who doesn't know what's in it. Like, what do we what do we got here? Do you remember what's in it? Uh, vaguely, but I think you should refresh my memory. I should refresh your memory? All right, good to <laughs> why know. Why don't you tell if me you the name? Many, <laughs> so why don't to you see. tell me the name? Uh, it is two ounce of Pisco, and then it is one ounce lime juice, and then a half ounce simple syrup, and a half ounce egg white. And then I'm going to shake this, and it's going to get real loud. Great. I got to shake yes. it all vigorously. Okay. what they say. So just a heads up on that. Yeah. Uh, and Mike then, just looked this up on Google right before you got here. This so is amazing. 100%. Is this like the highest maintenance drink you've had so far? <laughs> it is. I thought about that. I'm like, we're going to need egg whites. We're going to need no, a tourniquet. Great. Like, boil That's some hot water. Like, oh, yeah. We got, we're going full <laughs> on Pisco Sour. I'm a big fan of, like, whiskey sours and, and Pisco Sours, too. So I was like, all right, let's go. Have you had one? Uh, yeah, of course. I've had many. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. We had water last week, so that was a bit of a downer. Oh. Um, but we did have champagne and rosé the week before, and so... I thought about going that route because I'm about as basic as it yes. comes, and I love me a bottomless mimosa brunch. We know. I had to done that before, too. I know. Yeah. Yes, we have. But this is good. So um, we'll, let, uh, we'll let Mike still keep making that drink, and I Ready? guess we'll let you shake it up. Yeah. So that... You don't want to do the yeah. interview while I shake it up? <laughs> Living his best cocktail life right here, Tom Cruise. Yeah, baby! <laughs> this is pretty good. This is a side hustle. For a prop. Oh! <laughs> right as we said he was doing well, we were giving you high marks. I was crushing You're it. You're caught! You blew it! Oh, that is... <laughs> well... How you do that, that my sounds shirt. like my <laughs> this is so, Can you ring that into a glass? Yeah, let me drink that. Don't waste <laughs> okay, anything. well we're 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 gonna have one. We'll have one we'll pisco have, sour. We'll have like oh, no. one and a half. Okay, we're gonna have one and a half. We'll Mike's one and a half. Is that a hint? Mike's, Is he saying we drink Mike's too much? Mike's making a comeback now. Here we go. He's gonna get. Don't blow it. Yeah, up. you got one strike against you, and then you're back to being a glorified prop. <laughs> no pressure. <sighs> Wow, look how <laughs> frosty those shakers are. See? It's all over you. I Not feel the egg white. real strong right now. Do you feel like you're in Peru? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're basically I'm, Peruvian I'm basically after that. I'm just like 
thinking about everyone watching this who works here at LiveX, just like, oh. great, I'm glad all that alcohol's all over our <laughs> yeah, stuff right now. Fun. That's going to cost you $4,000. I hope you like your drink, though. Yeah, sorry, guys. I know Mike won't be getting a paycheck this, <laughs> this time proud. around, but yeah. dang. Definitely. This is your last day at work. <laughs> Remember when Mike used to work here? Yeah. That guy was wild. <laughs> was that guy would just spill booze everywhere. <laughs> This looks really nice, like, though. It looks <laughs> it looks even better on the floor. So. Yeah. Oh yes, and then you have the bitters to top. And then it we off. gotta top it off. Okay, we so gotta... yeah, what's next? What's this final? This is just a little garnish, because I'm very professional. Can you make a design yeah. in there. Yeah, let me do a little yeah. little latte art for you. <laughs> I want to leave. Oh my gosh, I mean that's not even any good. Here, you, I'm gonna give this one to you. Okay. Yeah, All right. right. I got that one that looks like someone pooped in it. <laughs> okay. No, maybe you'll do a well, nice I'll try, one. I'm gonna do a real guest. nice one. Okay. I'm gonna do a real nice one here. You just gotta try to do a drop. Oh look, he's, you're shaky. Okay. Well, I'm nervous. Well, when you get, uh, you know, cocktail all over yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, that was okay, Mike. Hey, that's why but I have you're this fired one. now, that's so. Beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Well, See you Mike. later. Don't be in there. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Very nice to have you here on the show. Let's take a little taste test. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty um, good. So before we head to our first time out, what are we toasting here today? What's something awesome Ooh. going on for you you know what i think we should toast to both of us in our new endeavors that's so you laura both here on fubo and on the and uh i think just to the the new frontier of how we're consuming media i know like i sound like i'm at a ted talk right now no, but I, I think we are on the right end of things so and cheers to getting plastered in the yes cheers to, to being while you're at work in the millennial streaming world and getting drunk at work I suck at everyone else who doesn't get to drink on TV. <laughs> mm. Great. Okay. Well, this is awesome. And um, we're going to have a whole lot more with Lauren. Mike just got fired. Justin. <laughs> uh, jokes. <laughs> we'll be back after this on Drinks with Binks. <laughs> drinking and banking here on drinks with banks i'm jsb and we have got lauren gardner here from zone also my friend and mike is sadly not with us anymore he died in the commercial <laughs> break so unfortunately uh, <laughs> <a big> <laughs> he, no he was great all kidding aside this drink is amazing and right? he may be rehired back from the dead later on to make us <laughs> some more drinks we'll have to see but uh yeah before the break we talked about we're toasting to streaming, DAZN, your new gig, mm -hmm. this whole new gig. Uh, you've been at DAZN for a couple months now. Just, like, how has it been? Because you were in Colorado for pretty much, like, your whole Yeah, for a long life, time. And then you come to New York. Mm -hmm. Just your initial thoughts on everything. Yeah, well, and, and I'm sure it's the same with you. I always have people that approach me and they, they ask, you know, how did you get to where you are? And, you know, like, give me the roadmap. Well, we both know, like, no two journeys are alike in this industry. So, yeah, I mean, I was just in Colorado working for the Regional Sports Network, covering the NHL and the Colorado Avalanche and hosting a fantasy football show that was syndicated. And before that, I was working for, you know, CBS Sports Network on the sidelines of, you know, college football games and college basketball and doing some NFL stuff. And this kind of came around and... I was like, wait, okay, DAZN, like, what's this about? Because, you know, they're really prevalent in uh, other markets around the world. But here in the U.S., they were just trying to just find their footprint, and it has been in boxing so far. So they're really the home for boxing and Bellator, and uh, you can kind of think of it as, like, the Netflix for combat sports. Okay. And, you know, boxing fans are used to paying money for big fights or really any fight via pay-per-view. So this is kind of disrupting that whole model. But really to answer your question, I was like, okay, like I don't know a ton about boxing, but now I'm learning a lot yeah. more. And uh, I came out and auditioned for this baseball show, which is essentially like red zone for baseball, but with a twist. Like not only do we like color outside the lines, like we think outside the box and we color outside the lines in Sharpie. Cause right. we get to have fun. It's like this show, we kind of just do what we want. So it's been a really fun transition, but moving to a new city and yes. you know, it, You've experienced this There's going so from many things that kind of shake you up. Yes. So it's been a great 
uh, learning experience and a, a great opportunity for growth. Like, I don't want to get all Oprah on everyone, but I do <laughs> listen to a lot of her podcasts. Uh, but the whole thing and the people you meet and, you know, growing as a professional and just seeing how you not only you can evolve uh, in, you know, honing your craft, but just as a person. And I, I honestly, it's been such a great experience. And I cannot believe that the regular season is almost over. It is wild. It flew oh, by. It's gone. It was just opening day. Before that, I think I met up with you and yeah. I was like, Julie, I'm in a new city. What do I do? I'm so scared. I'm living in a hotel. Yeah, yeah, that was, I guess, right when you moved here. And yeah. speaking of Oprah, I did read that that's sort of like someone you idolize yes. and a combination of maybe someone you want to be at some point. But you mentioned with the zone, coloring out the lines, kind of having a bit mm -hmm. more license to have freedom. Is it. Like, how much do you rely on sort of improv in that setting? Because that's got to yeah. be difficult when you're dealing with these live games, mm -hmm. stats, everything's moving. Like, we do improv, but we're drinking with my friends, so it's a little <laughs> bit easier. How do you handle it? You make it? it look easy. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's I, harder than it looks here. I'm Plenty of you. practice, so uh, that's why they gave me a show like this. She's, like, uh, She's great for this. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting combination. I remember going in for the audition, and they're like, okay, there's no prompter. Uh, we're going to show you some graphics and highlights and uh, we're just going to tell you where to go from there. So it is being quick on your feet, but at the same time, it, it, I've kind of described it as both the most difficult show I've ever worked on and also the easiest. Because once you kind of get entrenched in you know that world and you just know so much mm -hmm. about the league and the storylines just via osmosis, you just get to sit and hang out and talk about baseball. Right. And we have fun segments and you know we kind of play off of pop culture and you know we'll do like a Mount Rushmore of you know like Dustin May with the Dodgers has a crazy red hair and he looks mm -hmm. like Sideshow Bob. So we're like we're gonna do the Mount Rushmore of like all time like greatest gingers and they can be like carrot top or yeah. like athletes so I think we're trying to blur that line because we're not going to be some of those whip around shows that you may see on MLB Network mm -hmm. or Fox we have to become our own thing that caters to the Millennials and even Generation right. Z and uh, so we just have fun with it so the improv part is a huge element and I think I've been able to grow in that respect uh, just kind of along the way just, yeah just kind of like yeah. I mean you're just sort of thrown out there you've done so many things in broadcasting but similar to my previous background it was very much by the book of like yes. stand up or reporting or sort of you know how it goes mm -hmm. but this is like if you mess up you just got to keep going exactly. and, and not kind of worry about it which is what I would imagine first of all as an athlete but also as someone in in comedy and in acting like you have to just be able to just move on quickly. Yeah, and I think self-deprecation is mm -hmm. a great tool for that. <laughs> like, I am not that. above that. And you know what? You just have to recover quickly from embarrassment. And it's live television. As mm -hmm. you know, you make a mistake and you move on. It happens. Yeah. But it's not like, I mean, remember when we were sideline reporters and I did work one game on YouTube, which was yeah. crazy. The Braves-Rockies game. So at, you know. Yeah, my, you're back in your old stomping grounds. Dude, then. it was my hood. And like, yeah. But it was just so crazy. Like, working this game and looking down at the mic flag and seeing YouTube on there. Yeah, that's strange. Here we and that are. comes so quickly too. Yes. And it's I mean it's such a great opportunity for people, you know, around the globe to mm -hmm. watch this sport. And so I wanted to take I guess that growth and apply it to that role and not just be like that robotic sideline reporter that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I was previously even just a few months prior. Well, it's safer. Like that's it sort is. of what we were told yes. to be and how to act yes. and do. So and we all sounded the, the exact same when we did our yeah. hits, just like this. Well, you have red hair, at least. I have blonde hair and look like everyone else. People are like, I've seen you on TV. I'm like, no, you haven't. I just look like every other person that you probably think I am. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So it was kind of fun, especially being on YouTube. I was like, okay, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to be just more conversational, maybe, well, I'm, I'm nowhere near where you are as far as cracking jokes, but oh, I'm pretty good at it. I think so. You have no. nailed it. I still need to go see your uh, your stand up, but yeah. um, so then I was like, you know what, guys? Like, let's literally like see some of the flavor of the ballpark. So this is a fun story. Coors Field. So the, it T-Mobile Park in Seattle. They have the fried crickets, mm -hmm. and you're like, wow, that's pretty wild, right? This is ballpark fair. Normally, you're used to like hot dogs and French fries and whatnot. Well. In Colorado, Rocky Mountain oysters are considered a delicacy. Whoa. Yes, you know what those are. And if you don't know, I just suggest you look it up on the internet. Um, but they serve them fried. And I was like, you know what? Screw At it. At the ballpark? At the ballpark. You have to look for them. They're like in the top level. You have to really search. So by the time they got down to me in my position, they weren't exactly hot. Oh, man. But yeah, we had them. But we you ate took them. a risk. You did it. Went for All it. All for the job. For All TV. for the job. 
that's what it's all about now having I'm a, a lot vegetarian. of fun just doing whatever people like seeing that kind of stuff more than just there's a place for reporting and 100 stats and everything yes. like that but people like to see people enjoying themselves like us right now i don't know if we're like cut out for that kind of life <laughs> i know i know not anymore we, we did yes. it um i have plenty more questions i want to ask you about boxing DAZone, hockey colorado you say colorado colorado well, that's a great question. Okay, well, we're going to get the answer to that coming up after the break on Drinks with Banks. Welcome on back to Drinks with Banks. We are drinking Pisco Sours with Lauren Gardner from DAZONE. Also doing some stuff with NHL Network. And we had a great tease before the break, of course. What is the answer to how do you pronounce Colorado or Colorado? That's answer. a good question. I, I guess it depends on where you're from. But being a native, I think I can stake claim and say it's Colorado. Okay. Just like Nevada, not Nevada. Yes. And you said it's a great Veep episode, by the way, if you've not watched that show. Veep? I think I've watched it like three times. I'm obsessed. I felt like it was snubbed slightly at the Emmys this year. Yes. Because that Fleabag just won season. like everything, which I haven't seen yet. But Me I've also heard it's good. But It's always the shows or the movies you haven't seen that end up like sweeping. Like, and you're like, oh, OK, are like, we who's this? seeing this? I, I get it. Whatever. The critics. The critics, voters. The but elitist. Veep was incredible. It's a, She's the best. Yeah. It's what we're now promoting veep on the show while we're sponsored by <laughs> veep not? as we're sponsored by peace goes iris um but for colorado you spent so much you grew up in denver mm -hmm. tell me about like just getting into sports and getting into like when you decided you wanted to be a sports broadcaster it was such a crazy journey as i mentioned earlier here and it was, you know, I went to college thinking, like, I always grew up a sports fan, right? Like, went to the parades for the Colorado Avalanche, and obviously you being Canadian, like, mm -hmm. you get it. Like, the first year they showed up in Denver, they're like, oh, we're going to win a Stanley Cup. And we're like, sweet, hockey is the best. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously I played softball growing up, so I was obviously a Rockies fan. I love Larry Walker. He was that lefty that was so good in the outfield. He had cannon. He could just, like, throw a guy out on a rope out to, th you know, third base. And so I was like, Dad, we have to sit in right field and, like, watch Larry Walker. He's the man like so for me i was just all in and of course denver broncos like they reign supreme in colorado okay. it is most definitely broncos country so i went to college and i was like oh i love sports but i'm gonna be a lawyer like my grandpa so i was a political science major oh. and then ended up just kind of getting involved with professional sports via internships through various magazines and i was a cheerleader for the broncos for a few seasons wow. which was a great what was that like it was a really good networking opportunity and uh, you know i know there's been a lot out there right. uh, a lot of negative press uh revolving around professional cheerleaders specifically in the nfl and for me the experience was tremendous and i know it all varies based on the uh respective organizations but my personal experience and i can i think speak on behalf of a lot of the women that i cheered with as we get really serious here on drinks with banks yeah it's um, a deep dive right now <laughs> i know but they were great i mean we had we had women that were training to be pharmacists and mm. mothers and teachers and really leaders in the community and we just wanted to be part of something that was bigger than us and contributed over 2100 hours of community oh service gosh. back into the colorado community and surrounding states a season we had our uh, junior Denver Broncos um, cheerleading program, and that generated the revenue for the Broncos cheerleaders. So we were able to be paid fairly. Right. And oh, that's it great. Was... What kind of like, sorry to interrupt, but what kind of commitment yeah. is that? Because uh, I mean, yeah. people don't really realize like how much time you put into that. And you also have to have another job though, right? Totally, yeah. And so a lot of times it does attract students or you know people that can handle the, the workload. So I will say your social life isn't exactly that active, but it's almost like being in a sorority or you know mm -hmm. on any other team. Like, I was a softball player all the way through high school and it was a very similar atmosphere as far as like your teammates and you kind of had like the blood sweat and tears because you're practicing all summer a couple times a week and you know we would dedicate ourselves to you know obviously physical fitness and other things like that but it, it was a big time commitment but 
I loved every second of it mm. because you're, in my opinion, like not only did you get to express yourself artistically by performing out on the field, and that was such a rush in front oh, of I all bet. those fans. I mean, it's about you know, the next best thing you get to playing the actual game. So for me, it was so amazing and to embrace our femininity and mm -hmm. our physical fitness out there. So I always felt very empowered and I have friends for life. Oh, that's great. Yeah, like, yeah you I mean, it, it does look like such a fun experience for it was me. Great. Terrifying. I can't imagine dancing in front <laughs> you of would be great. And it, I would just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. What do I do with my hands? Um, But did you ever get <laughs> nervous in that? Like, this is what would be going through my head. I don't want to mess up. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Everyone's watching. One hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I remember one time, and they were great. I missed uh, rehearsal when we were actually learning choreography because at the time I was working minor league hockey wow. on the radio for a CHL team like 45 minutes away. And there was a game and also on the regional network that I just left. So it was always full circle, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, man, like I really want to work this game. And they're like, of course. So I came back and I learned the choreography, but I kind of like was a little off on the formation. So the game was that Sunday. So we're out there and there was a beat. It was a very small beat, but in my mind, it felt like an eternity. So I'm out there and you're like, you know, in front of 86,000 people, no pressure. And I just totally blacked out. No! I was like, blank! No! It was so bad. But no one really noticed because we were like down okay, for a okay. certain part, but I just kind of stayed down while everyone came back up and I was like, <laughs> okay. And then I looked over and I was like, no, I remember. But yeah, that is that is definitely it that paralyzing moment. It probably felt so moment. much longer and, and worse than it actually was. Just like in broadcasting, yes. right? Like if you're doing a hit or something happens in a show, you're like, that was the worst. And you watch it back and it's never as bad as you think. Yeah. Never as good as you think never as bad yeah 100 percent. yeah, yeah. okay so, well that terrifies Ooh, me because i probably would have sweating just reliving it got down and would have been like i like i just, just want like, to crawl off the field and, like not I'm be good, here thank you well kudos to you having to do that in front of everyone there but then that Thanks, lends dude. itself well to being on television because then you're mm -hmm. unshakable in those moments yes so it, it did teach you how to uh, have poise under pressure and you know to speak in front of people because it, they chose different women for various reasons right. some were I mean we had women that were part of the Utah and New York Ballet and a rockette wow. and you know so they were out there because they were tremendous dancers for me I wasn't like <laughs> really big into the techniques I was in the back like doing the cool stuff yeah. I was like you do the really Just like snapping yeah. in the yes, background exactly. <laughs> and they're like but you can talk to all the people because you're good at that in front of groups yeah, so okay it was great so I worked for them for a while and hosted things on um like the local channel like the draft when Tim Tebow was drafted wow. I hosted the special that's a while ago. That, now I feel old. No, that's not that long ago. <laughs> Demarius Thomas was part of that draft. So it was crazy, but it was a lot of fun. And yeah, covered minor league hockey, indoor lacrosse. Uh, at one point, Ultimate Frisbee, which is called okay. Ultimate because Frisbee is the brand. Okay. So wow. not lots brought to you by Frisbee. Lots of stuff. Yeah, no, we're not promoting Frisbee. <laughs> on, we are an anti-Frisbee show, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, we've got a we whole lot more frisbee. we want to get into with you, Lauren, <laughs> but we got to take a quick time out. We're going to sip. We're going to we're gonna drink and bank, and we'll be back. <laughs> it's a great segue. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Welcome on back, Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks. I always have to have a hard time with that. I'm like, am I who Julie Stewart drinks today? I'm not sure, but I know who you are. You are Lauren Gardner from DAZN and NHL Network and all that amazing stuff. And we were just talking about you being a Broncos cheerleader. Yeah. But that was sort of Old a detour from what... Have, by the way, quick question. Have you gone back and done one of those like reunion oh, yes. cheerleader things? Yes, I have. Recently, I believe it was two years ago. That was paralyzing. And how did that go? It went well. I didn't pull anything. So That's I consider that, that a victory. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was like, my neck was so sore. I was like, how did I do this yeah. for so long? <laughs> you realize, like, you put your body through a lot of that kind of yes. crap when we're young guns. Not anymore, Ooh. though. No, we just sit on the couch and, oops, we yeah. drink sometimes <laughs> and try not to hit the microphone at the same time. Uh, so, but was there, when you were growing, you know, you're, you're, being a cheerleader you're also doing a mm -hmm. stuff with the radio station you're talking about what was sort of uh was there sort of a moment like a catalyst or like yeah you know what or seeing someone being like i want to do that 
Sure. Yeah. So I was interning at the uh, local regional, that's kind of an oxymoron, but the regional sports network in Denver. And I was doing everything from like, you know, running the ticker to camera to editing arena football footage, which was difficult because every play is a touchdown. I'm like, is this touchdown? <laughs> yeah. And then this touchdown. <laughs> and, you know, MLB stuff. And I was solely in the studio and I kind of just like reached out to the executive producer there and I asked him, I was like, hey, do you guys have interns? And he's like, not really. But I just called him so many times he got tired of hearing from me mm. he's like fine just come in and like figure it out and I really liked just the culture the people that work behind the scenes that really make this happen and you know obviously sports there are so many narratives that are untold and mm -hmm. I think it transcends so many different aspects of life and to me the storytelling was so appealing and it, it was really just connecting with people and I, I'll never forget I was like I think I want to do this for a living right. but maybe hosting I don't know mm -hmm. and then it kind of transitioned to doing some stuff on camera in various platforms I think at one point in time I was working for the local sports magazine hosting it was called Mile High Sports Betty yes that Ooh, was a thing it was yeah. around town it's a hard, was like, you know it's just a hard name to play with so like, brutal it's the name but so brutal yeah. and then I was like the in-game host for the Colorado Rockies and the Colorado Avalanche and then at one point in time I even did that for the Broncos so I have worked for nearly every single wow. team in the Denver metro area and beyond, but just pay your dues. And even I worked for MTV2 covering lingerie football. Right. And I remember those days. I was like, Yee. yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> but the, once again, those athletes, mm -hmm. they are very good athletes. Incredible. And uh, that was six months of my life. And then we moved on and uh, landed a job with CBS Sports Network as a sideline reporter for college football and the rest was kind of history and then and ended you, up you stayed in Colorado in Denver when you were with CBS like um, you pretty much or no yeah well I lived in Cincinnati that okay. was a brief period of my life and a then chilly. Uh, yeah a little chilly yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. The, the winters are very gray and also the the chilly there the, yes like, skyline, oh, the chilly. skyline chilly yeah. yes and it has like it's supposed to have like chocolate and cinnamon in it yeah I'm not necessarily a fan. Sorry if you guys are in Cincinnati. <laughs> we got a big Cincinnati fan base here. They're going to be real yeah. mad about that one. <laughs> um, I wasn't so much into the chili, but the barbecue was great. Loved every minute of it. Just yet another culture. It wasn't quite the Midwest. It was mm -hmm. like the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> the Middle East of America. I was like... <laughs> So it was uh, it was a great experience, and I worked on a show for the Smithsonian Channel at one point in time. Like you know how it is, you work on so many projects that one like at some point like someone will remind you. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. Like like a lot of different jobs. Yeah, like the 2015 All Star Week for Fox Sports Ohio. Like all these things just kind of pop up, and you just take any and every opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then went back home to Altitude and covered the Avalanche, Nuggets, right. and Broncos, and. Uh, now I'm at DAZN. Yeah, that's like, so Ooh. exciting. There's so many different avenues with that to that we can dive into. The fact that you spent most of your career, other than the Cincinnati <laughs> journey in Colorado and then moving to New York, it's yeah. just you know a quick thought, but we'll come back to it after the break. But just the idea of leaving your hometown yes. had to have been very difficult. What what was the push and pull factors around that? That's a great question because you get to a certain point in your life and maybe even your career where you're like, this is really great. I'm in my hometown working for a fabulous network. Who says fabulous anymore? I'm in New York now. Fabulous. fabulous. <laughs> working for a, you know, a fabulous network. The people I work with are tremendous. I get to fly all over North America with a hockey team and mm. host a syndicated fantasy football show and cover soccer and all these different things. But... I actually had, let me get all Oprah on you again. Mm -hmm. I had a premonition the year before. And my contract was up in a year. And like I was coming over this crest on the street and I saw the mountains and the sun was setting behind them. And it was really, it was beautiful. But something inside me was like, you're moving in a year. And it said, you're moving to New York. And none Whoa. of this was even a thing. It was crazy. And lo and behold, like here we are. Yeah, well, so, you, were, you were like manifesting that though. I believe in that. Like you, you manifested like, um, this whole thing. Yeah, I knew I was going to have a show where it's going to be getting shit based on so yeah. <laughs> was, i thought about that on many many nights it's a perfect no, i, I had a take. moment like that actually when i was in saskatchewan and i was driving really? in the cold winter to go cover junior curling in weyburn and i thought that is the sexiest i saw the sign and i thought i can only hope <laughs> to hell that i get the f out of this place <laughs> someday <laughs> And it didn't happen for a while, but you just think long and hard enough, you get where you, you want to go. There. And then I think when you put it out there, every like subsequent action that you take leads to something much bigger, which mm -hmm. is your goal. 
Yeah, Not sometimes say, that I mean, goal changes too, which is yes. what really messes the whole thing up. Yes. But good. You have to be open to opportunities. Yes, yes and, right? As, mm-hmm. as we were talking before. Okay, we got to take uh, a short break and we're going to dive more into these Pisco Sours. But when we return, we'll talk a whole lot more. It's a Lauren Gardner here on Drinks with Bing. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. I've got Lauren Gardner from Zone and NHL Network, NHL MLB, or just yeah, NHL. It's the same all thing. The same. They're all, We're all one big happy family. And speaking of MLB, though, we've got playoffs coming up. Yes. And you mentioned how quickly this season has gone, which. Funny enough, it has gone very quickly, even though right? it is like the longest season of all time. You're not and lying. <laughs> this is airing on Friday, so we know that Mets have been eliminated, Phillies. We're mm-hmm. not necessarily sure about the AL wildcard situation. It's a disaster. Yeah, because we, we spoke with our guest on Thursday, Nelson Figueroa, briefly about the fact that there is this tiebreaker situation. Like, how do yes. you guys, like, what what are what are we can we expect from this so yeah the game 163 we saw two of those last year it was the rockies and the dodgers okay. my rockies by the way kind of shameless plug i'm a rockies fan and i'm wearing the chuck nasty shirt i think I'm... yes charlie blackman nice okay that's a, it's a shameless plug. shirt thank you if you're a rockies fan you can do whatever the hell you want you know after this season yeah. so we saw <laughs> game 163 between the rockies and the dodgers for you know basically the uh nl west title Sadly, the Rockies lost, but they went and they beat the Cubs in the wild card game. And then we saw Milwaukee and Chicago, the Cubs, play in game 163 last year. So we have potential to see that in the AL this year, which Mm -hmm. is really exciting. We thought the A's were going to run away with it. And they just experienced their first three-game skid for the first time since mid-July. And as we know, like in baseball speak, that's an eternity ago. Mm -hmm. So it's... uh, it's high drama, but that's what you want to see. So we saw, I mean, we saw the Brewers last night. I guess you're watching this on Friday, so we're going back to the yeah. future. So Wednesday, there we go. That's how this all works. The Brewers. This is not live. We gave it away. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we saw them clinch a postseason berth and the champagne showers and all that. Then the Twins were waiting around to see what was going to happen with the Indians. The Indians lost, so the Twins now won the AL Central. So it's just complete mayhem, mm-hmm. and I think that's what we love about the sport then you're going to have like basically the game seven you know wild card really? games yeah. yeah and th- but you also have that 163 so it's no surprise the teams that make it through that end up just petering out if they even make it to you know the nl or the alds because they're just exhausted or it's like this weird sort of like galvanizing power of like yes. oh we had to go through all of this yada mm-hmm. yada yada and if they're still not injured and they're okay they yep. like they use it as something. Well, for me, all roads lead back to the Rockies, like the 07 Rockies who went on that streak, <laughs> and they ended up losing to the Red Sox in the World Series. But yeah, momentum is a powerful thing. You and I have been around sports for a long time, and we know exactly what that can do. And you've seen it with the Washington Nationals and Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, they they've lost been Christian Yelich, the reigning NL MVP, and they've just gone on a tear. So they have really like galvanized mm-hmm. around losing arguably their best player. And it hasn't been a bunch of stars, but at least guys like Lorenzo Kane, who's been great defensively, has really stepped up to the, the plate. Proverbial he, he plate has there. Stepped up to the plate. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's been so fun. And when we're there almost each and every night watching these games, like you're kind of living it. Yeah. And you just, as you know, the way you talk about it, you're so passionate about it, but yeah. like you just know so much about it and you're, you're so dialed into it. For us in New York, now we've got one team, uh, yeah. the Yankees, who seem to be on a collision course to get to the Astros again. Pitching seems to be what it comes down to in mm-hmm. the playoffs, but what do you think about the Yankees' chances and going forward? So I actually had to do predictions for Sporting News earlier this week, and I, I know that Greg Domino, PR extraordinaire with DAZN, was very upset with me because I picked the Yankees to lose Ooh. to the Astros, obviously, in the ALCS, but I, I think the Yankees – tremendous team they've overcome all those injuries and they have like uh, basically the, the Rockies were like oh here's DJ LeMahieu mm-hmm. here's Adam Adovino here's huge. Mike Talkman like oh fine that's great I mean we were sad to see DJ, DJ LeMahieu go and he wasn't even really slotted to start 
and here we go. He I mean, incredible. he might win a batting title. Yeah. So I, I, I love watching what they've been able to do. I mean, at one point in time, they had like a, an all-star IL team. <laughs> yeah, they, they were did. all on the inter list. Well, they've had like thirty guys on the IL this Insane. year. Insane, and, and you know they didn't even have win the division. Yeah, like their ace, like Luis Severino, finally coming back. He's been tremendous, but he was gone for most of the season. Uh, Dylan Batensis gone. I know that's a real rough injury for right? him. Right, but at least like James Paxton has come back and he's done really well. And Big then, Maple, baby. Big Maple. Yeah, I know my Canadians. Canadians. I know my Canadians in the league. Big, 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 big. Yeah, Joey Votto, not, not so You're not great, on board with Joey Votto? No, I like him. It's just, you know, yeah. it's like I get Reds, it. Eh, yeah, eh, man. whatever. Totally um, understand. But I, I don't think that prediction's bad because I think yeah. the Astros, uh, you know, sorry, Greg, PR guy from Tassone. <laughs> that's, that's, that's tough. I mean, we are in Yankees town or yeah. Mets town, whoever you ask, but uh, Astros just looking like real hot again this year. Insane. That rotation. It's the rotation. Zach Greinke on Wednesday night. Let's see what we did there. Uh, made sure that we are not live. Zach Greinke almost tossed a no-no last night. He's going to be the third guy in that no. rotation. You have two uh, AL Cy Young finalists. So what do you think? Uh, who does it come down to? Who's in the World Series and who wins? So I'm picking a big upset. A lot of people are... are predicting a rematch of the fall classic in 2017 between the la dodgers and the houston astros i'm saying the astros are going to make it but here's the twist oh, oh, wow. should what i take a got? drink um yeah yeah yes! yeah let's take a sip there we go i'm basically done <laughs> delicious right the St. Louis Cardinals. Ooh, Jack whoa. Flaherty is going to lead them to the promised land. Really? Paul Goldschmidt is getting hot. Yadier Molina is Yadier Molina, and he's the best, and we love him. And it's just a tradition of winning. And, oh, by the way, the St. Louis Blues just won the Stanley Cup, so I'm just so throwing that synergy. in there. So synergy. So the Binks. Blues won. Everyone's, like, going bananas, and then the Cardinals will take. It's like yeah. passing the baton. Okay, yeah. I, I can get behind that. It's a spicy I don't tick. really believe that will happen. I honestly... I, I used to live in LA. It would be nice to see the Dodgers actually do it. Third the last time's two a charm. years have been really rough yeah. for them. And it's just like they've had such a great season, too, and they have such incredible players. It's like, yeah. Eh. Yeah, no, I see exactly what you're saying. I'm just worried about Kenley Jansen. And uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do because they've tried Kenley Jansen. They have Joe Kelly in. These teams are going to rely so much on their bullpens. Yes. And these managers get so aggressive in the playoffs. And, and I get that because pitching is everything. And we've seen the home runs just just come in at alarming yeah. rates this year. Uh, so I, I definitely see that. But for me, I just wanted to be a contrarian and hey, you got go it. against the grain. Like I like a spicy take, just like I like my men. I like them hot. Oh, yes. There we well, go. And, uh, <laughs> I like my men spicy, too. I'd say we can drink to the that. women's yes, show. Yeah. We can, uh, no, no vanilla, guys. No. Oh, no, we're not into that. Boring. Um, before we go to break, though, I do want to know you've gone into, you mentioned fighting. And yeah. Like, that you hadn't really done not that myself. before. I'm not fighting. Uh, yeah, that you, I want to announce this here. <laughs> I will be on the main card at MSG. Yeah, but you, you know, with the red zone. hair, though, you could kind of, like, pull it off could in a imagine? way. Like, you, you have. Uh, you know a certain star quality oh, that well, when I'm saying you could be a <laughs> WWE diva <Yes. laughs> um, but you've been doing you mentioned Bellator you've been doing fighting with the zone yeah. um, just before you go to break like what is I mean what's been the biggest surprise with covering fighting it has been an absolute blast I think the biggest surprise to so my first ever boxing match was Canelo Wow, in okay. Vegas at T-Mobile Arena. I was like, oh, this is great. I'm sitting ringside. I'm yeah. like, this is boxing. I love it. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, slow your roll. This is huge. Um, I, I just think when you see it up close, how how much of it, not only is it a craft, kind of like what we do, but mm -hmm. they also train really hard. And just the power and the speed and the agility and the athleticism and the dedication that it takes to be successful at that sport. I have a tremendous amount of respect for all of those fighters mm -hmm. well that's great and i mean you get to work on your skills yeah. and, and learning how learning fighting and being a part of that world and that's what we're all trying to do it's like people say oh but you should do this because you're good at this or do this it's like yeah, no no exactly. we're all trying to develop and learn and mm -hmm. grow as we do here also on on drinks with banks and uh we're gonna take a time out but when we return we've got plenty more questions some quick hitters for lauren gardner next
Hey everyone, welcome on back to Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks, joined by Lauren Gardner from DAZN, and we are drinking new Pisco Sour. Yes, bottoms up. Round, bottoms up. And this is from Mike, who came back from the dead to resurrect his soul and his reputation after <laughs> destroying the floor back there by just a simple task of shaking a martini shaker, and he just couldn't do it. But he made us a nice round again. So it's delicious. It, uh, yes, yes. The presentation's better this time around. The pour is a little bit. I think he like went back, bigger. went back on Google, was like, okay, what did I do wrong last <laughs> time? I'm going to make better jokes, Mike. Thank you. Making us drinks on the show. And you're not a bartender on the show. Or a glorified prop. Or a glorified prop. Mike is Mike is great. Okay, moving on now. We have a couple of quick hits. Speaking Ooh. of other coworkers I have, these were written by Dan, who hasn't been here in two weeks because he's been getting <laughs> married and on his honeymoon. So I just wanted to throw him under the bus. Where's the honeymoon? Uh, they're in Mexico right oh, now. Oh, nice. He's posted some nice little Instagrams, and we are all very jealous. But <laughs> he got Wally pipped, so bye. Wow. Anyway, uh, number one, what's something in the entire world, anything, you feel is underrated Ooh, that is a great question what is underrated that's not and what dan patrick said about there. that question but what yes. did he say like oh this he is said trash. it was a really bad question i mean it's a great question because you have to start thinking about it and you like immediately your mind goes to sports and okay. you're like oh okay so since we were talking about this wild card race to me ramon laureano and really the oakland a's in general Underrated. I wanted to go something more pop culture or maybe food related, but that's all I got. I would have said the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's my favorite that's movie your of all jam. time. I love it. Very underrated. And Pisco Sour. And Pisco Sour. I looked at the wrong camera. I'm going to drink it out. I don't even know what camera we're working <laughs> at these days. Okay. Uh, number two, what's an occupational hazard about your job? Oh, so when I was a sideline reporter, and I know you can relate to this, it was literally like getting run over by, I don't know, a football player or having your toe amputated uh, via a hockey skate. Yes. Um, currently, it's saying stupid things while you're on television for three straight hours, commercial free. Yeah, that's, that, is, <laughs> that is very fair. You never know what you're going to say yeah. and who's going to tweet what and how it's going to be taken out of com context. But uh, Get a little com too comfortable. <laughs> I have a, a funny little um, joke about that with the occupational hazard. I When I did my master's, we had to say, oh, what occupational hazards have you had reporting? I did my master's in England. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I had a hockey stick like hit me in the face once. And then this other person in my class was like, yeah, I was reporting in Russia and two women had bombs attached to them beside Whoa. me. I was like, OK, that guy wins. <laughs> like, oh, that's my real. gosh. Yeah, that was that's like real stuff in the Dude, world. Dude, by the way, master's degree in I just London? wanted to let everyone know that I have a master's degree. Binks, you're so fancy. You need a drink with your pinky yes. out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, back to you. Uh, what are your three or who were your three childhood idols? Ooh. Doesn't have to be sports, just like anyone. Yeah. Childhood idols. Well, John Elway, obviously. Uh, it, it, you know what? It might boil down to sports figures in Colorado. Love it. Joe Sackick, mm -hmm. huge fan. Larry Walker. Sorry, there's not a woman in the mix there, but I was a big sports fan growing yeah, up. Yeah, well, it was back in like the 80s. Yeah, so I'm exactly. not saying 80s. I, I think you're like around the same age as me, so like mm -hmm. late 80s. Yeah. And so there's probably not that many women, but now there are now. Girl power. Okay, next one. Two tickets to anywhere in the world. Where would you go and with who? Aside from Paradise, um, I would go. With Eddie or money. Peru. I know. Yeah. Or Peru. Um, okay, so right now, I really want to go see the Northern Lights, which is like the craziest thing to say. I'm going to go to Iceland in January. Worst idea ever. However, I want to see the Northern Lights. So. I don't think that's the worst idea ever. Thank you. Okay, so that's where I would go. Because I can't remember if it's a, like 24 hours of sunlight then or 24 hours of. Yeah, moonlight. so I think that's Alaska. <laughs> no. no, but you're right up that far in north. Iceland, yes, because the Earth, yeah, tilts. So, yeah, I think it's we're like talking moonlight. about science here. <laughs> well, as you see, the uh, Earth tilts on its axis yeah. in the, the winter months. So, Northern Lights are cool. I'm gonna say, because I'm from Canada, I've seen them before. You have? Yeah, but well, not as I don't think as like distinct and bright as you would see them. But is in it Iceland. still amazing, or did you kind of take it for granted? You're, you're like, like, I'm here, and it's, well, there they are again. You're like, what is? It's like green in the sky. Like, what is this? <laughs> no, I think it'd be beautiful, and you could go to the Blue Lagoon in Iceland yes, as well. Yes. Yes. 
All right. Well, that's all the questions I have. I believe there's no more. Thanks, Dan. uh, Phone in and in. But um, we're not done yet on Drinks with Binks. (laughs) Um, We talk a lot about your life, and people like to get to know who you are. Like, what? who is your favorite musician? Ooh. um, You know, it's always changing, especially when you have, like, we always just cherry pick everything nowadays, so you don't listen to, like, an entire album. Right. Um, so I really wanted to go see Maggie Rogers. Yes. Do you love her? Yes. I, I don't know know a lot about her, but, uh, my boyfriend's very into her. She's great. And, uh, like Lord Huron, but I like a little bit of everything, but those are like the recent concerts I've been to. Honestly, I'll listen to anything, Mm -hmm. but those are, I think my two favorite bands right now. And then quickly, um, before we go to break your favorite movie is what mm. <laughs> gosh i'm gonna sound so uncultured when i say like dumb and dumber or something oh uh, no it's an amazing movie or, like Step Brothers. but i also amazing. really love like anything by quentin tarantino like specifically pulp fiction i could watch that movie over and over and still like find something new and interesting about it yeah but at once upon a time in hollywood i just went and saw it was very interesting yeah yeah i don't want to like ruin it for anyone but the ending i was like what just happened oh i know and if you don't know what it's based on like you're really yes! you're really out there not knowing what the hell exactly. is happening but it is yeah. very interesting yes. and we have more to ask you we're not done yet on this show because this is the show left. that never ends <laughs> i don't know if i even say that okay we gotta go uh we'll be back in just a second these pisco sours are setting in on drinks and things Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. We've got Lauren Gardner from DAZN, and we are just about to say goodbye, but quickly, I know we talked about you love Oprah. You are a very yes. warm, welcoming person, and you're you. ver- doing such a great job in the sports world. What would be your dream job someday? We know you're like bosses are sitting here and whatnot, but what would <laughs> like, be? I want to work for DAZN for the rest yeah. of my life. I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I, I'm not quite sure. I'd love to have my own production company to just tell various stories. But ultimately, and I think everyone's like, who do you want to be when you grow up? And it's like, you want to do this. So I would love to be like a hybrid of Oprah meets Kelly Ripa meets Michelle Beadle. But yes. I think what we're learning, you and I specifically in this industry, is that you can only be like the best version of yourself. Yeah. So my answer is there is no answer. But I I want to just connect with people and hopefully use that that gift to right. to hopefully like spread good and light and hey. wow this is like a real soapbox for you know woo woo but i really believe in that no i mean and you channel it everywhere so i believe yeah. you'll be the best lauren gardner that there is and you have plenty of stuff coming up tell us like where we can catch you next yes so actually uh change up on the zone so this is friday tonight this is our final episode of the regular <sighs> season we also have uh some playoff previews coming up so i'll be on site at some of those ballparks just as a correspondent and then on nhl network on the fly uh nhl now here and there maybe some mlb network and then on to zone for uh maybe some of the upcoming fights because we have triple g canel alvarez two youtube stars amazing that is such great stuff thank you so much for being with us here today lauren Thanks, dude. lg underscore red and next week we'll be back with taylor rook so have a great week bottoms up babies